Alright, so this wasn't the video that I had originally planned to do to cap off the month of May, but then I remembered that May 29th is Sosuke Aizen's birthday, and so what better day than today to look at some of my favourite, what I believe to be the top 10 best Sosuke Aizen moments in Bleach. I've done a video like this previously looking at Ichigo's 10 best moments, now that wasn't released on his birthday, but I'm thinking moving forwards we could turn this into a new mini-series almost, when a major character's birthday rolls around, we take that opportunity to look at some of their absolute best moments in Bleach. Today is Aizen's birthday, so we're going to be celebrating Bleach's main villain with this video today, his top 10 best moments plus an honourable mention to boot. Before we get started on the video guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do that now for more Bleach content like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as it helps to support me and the channel as it just means we get more traction on the whole YouTube algorithm and hopefully more Bleach fans like yourselves will get a chance to see it. But if you really like what I do here and you want to take that support for me another step further, I do have a Patreon for my channel as well, where you can get videos like this one early and you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. Everyone who's coming up on the screen right now is a patron of this channel. They are supporting me, helping me do what I love, and I really, truly appreciate it. As always, I want to give you guys an eternal shout out. Thank you all so very much. So, like I said, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what I believe to be the top 10 best Sosuke Aizen moments in Bleach, plus an honourable mention, but this is a totally subjective video. This is my opinion. Aizen is my favourite character in the series, that's well documented, so I believe he's privy to a number of awesome moments throughout Bleach. And actually, this video... I'm very happy with this list, and I think this video shows that he has great moments spanning the entire series. As I said, though, it's totally subjective, so if you don't agree with my list or there are moments that you would have liked to have seen on here that aren't on here, do please let me know in the comments. I would love to see your lists as well. But now, without further ado, let's begin. And so, kicking off the list with our only honourable mention, this moment takes us right to the very end, the final chapter of the Arankar arc, where Aizen is now being sentenced by the Central 46 for his crimes against the Soul Society. And this moment is fantastic because he simply sits there, bound to his chair, and insults them. The moment where Aizen insults the Central 46 is so quintessentially Aizen. I absolutely love it. And this moment came as something of a bit of a relief to many Aizen fans, many readers of Bleach, because his character had been going in a slightly different direction as the Deicide mini-arc progressed. His meticulously laid out plans were crumbling around him, he couldn't fathom the situation, and he was losing his mind repeatedly week after week. So to see Aizen stripped of his transformations and returned to his normal, snarky self was wonderful to see. Now, I think Deicide is very much in character for someone who is as megalomaniacal as Aizen, but I won't lie, I loved seeing him back on top. And basically, the Central 46 sentenced him to 18,000 years in the prison Mukem, and Aizen simply scoffs at them. When they ask him what's so funny, he says, well, you know, beings of your calibre passing, passing judgement on me, is it? I find that to be rather comical. And they just fly into a rage. They increase his sentence by another 2,000 years. But of course, Aizen's immortal. He knows they've got nothing on him. And you get one final look at his eye, a very sinister shot as the last binding is placed over him. It's a brilliant way to cap off his story in the Iran car arc. Coming in at number 10, we have my personal favourite Aizen speech in the series, which is, of course, his How All Gods Are Born speech. Now, this fight against Shinji Hirako, we've done an entire video on in the past, and I absolutely love it. And I go into even more detail about their relationship in my recently released Fifth Division analysis. But this speech is so good because it provides valuable insight into Aizen's actual mindset. He's quite a closed-off character. The idea is he's supposed to be aloof, he's supposed to be on a different plane, and so normal peons, as it were, wouldn't really be able to understand him. Only a select few like characters like Gein, and Shinji, I think, is absolutely one of these characters. I love the way Kubo frames this. You have their eyes sort of on equal footing for virtually the entire conversation. They are fairly evenly matched when it comes to their verbal warfare, but then Aizen dominates the page as he caps off his speech, 
really revealing to Shinji the absolute caliber of enemy he's actually coming up against. Aizen basically details how he thinks the world works, that all living beings need something to believe in, someone to worship. Men worship kings, and kings worship gods, and that's how all gods are born. Aizen basically saying that he is a god, and that if Shinji takes the time, eventually after Aizen has shown him the truth, he will come to worship him as well. It's a great threat that causes even the ice-cold cool as a cucumber Shinji to start sweating, and I love that moment. It's just really great, and it really cements Aizen as kind of this god complex maniac who kind of reveals exactly how he feels about himself and the world around him. Coming in at number nine, we have one of the earliest instances in the Iran car arc of Aizen showcasing his true power. And this is when he puts Espada number six, Grimjo, on his knees. This is again another really cool moment, a great example of showing, not telling. During the Espada meeting, Grimjo, ever the rebel, gets up midway through the meeting and decides to leave to just go and put an end to their enemies, immediately catching Tosin's ire. Tosin's like, what do you think you're doing? You know, the meeting hasn't finished yet. And Grimjo's like, the enemies are here. I'm just going to go and kill them. And Tosin says, you know, Eisen, Lord Eisen hasn't finished talking yet. And Grimjo's like, I'm doing this for Lord Eisen, you know, being, you know, snarky, back talking to Tosin. The whole room falls silent. You know, there's like that deathly awkwardness. All the Espada are probably like, whoa, okay. Things just got really awkward in here. And then suddenly Eisen speaks, you know, very soft spoken, doesn't even look at Grimjo. And he says, I really appreciate your enthusiasm, but I haven't finished speaking yet. Take your seat. And Grimjo just doesn't reply, but he doesn't sit back down. You know, there is that air of rebellion. And suddenly Eisen's like, I didn't catch your reply, Grimjo. And he turns around and he just exerts his immense spiritual pressure, forcing Grimjo to the ground in an amazing display of dominance. Grimjo just crashes to his knees and he can't even do anything. This again by the way, somebody who was giving Ichigo a lot of trouble in their last few battles, this really elevated the threat level and made you realise that Aizen is just on a totally different plane to even the Espada. Great moment. Coming in at number eight, we have a moment from Aizen's short tenure in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and this is when he destroys the Soul King's own power. So Yu Harbak is up in the royal palace. He is absorbing the Soul King's own Reiatsu, but there's so much of it that he has to send a surplus of it down to the Soul Society to decimate the Shinigami living there currently. And things look really bad. The Soul King's power has manifested itself as this army of these black weird Reiatsu monsters, and they are overwhelming even characters using Bankai like Soifon and Byakuya. Suddenly, when all hope seems lost, the Ryatsu monsters suddenly just get annihilated. They start popping like balloons. This immense weight, this crushing ocean of Ryatsu seemingly comes out of the darkness and Aizen is revealed, strapped to his chair, but decimating all of these monsters. It's only then that the Soul Society realises that Aizen has been freed from prison by Kyoraku Shinsui, who had the foresight to realise they would need his power now that the Soul King is getting involved. But it doesn't end there. Another wave of these monsters comes raining down upon them, but to get rid of them all, Aizen uses a fully powered, no incantation, Hardo 90 Kuro Hitsugi, his signature move to decimate not only the entirety of the Soul King's power, but the building and it just levels the entire environment around them. Again, another fantastic way of showing us just how powerful he has become in the time he's been in prison. Number seven on our list is actually a flashback moment for Aizen, and this is when he conquers Waco Mundo, taking it from Barragan Luisenbahn and starting a decades-long feud between the two of them. This is honestly a really nice world-building moment. This is, of course, sometime before the present-day storyline. Barragan is still the king of Waco Mundo at this point, and then Aizen, Gein, and Tozen arrive on his doorstep. Barragan is very arrogant, even in the face of these three captains, but what he doesn't know is that they are about to take pretty much everything from him and thoroughly humble the King of the Hollows. Aizen starts out amicably enough, basically offering Barragan a, a seat at the table, giving him more power than he could have ever imagined. When Barragan basically casts him aside and says, you know, you are, you're an ant, you couldn't give me anything more than I have, and he orders his men to kill them, 
Aizen breaks the illusion using his Zan Pak Toh, revealing the truth of what's going on in Barragan's empire, which is that Gein and Tosin have decimated pretty much his entire army, rendering him nearly helpless. Barragan, enraged, draws his axe Gran Kaida, but Aizen gives one final barb, saying, you know, you look like a soul reaper, wielding a big weapon, wearing all black. And we can only assume, I believe the anime extends this a little bit, but as far as the canon manga goes, we can only assume that Aizen subjugates him from that point on. But again, that's a great display of Aizen's tenacity and his cunning as well, and just almost his evil sense that he just robs everything from Barragan, someone who had enjoyed presumably centuries, if not millennia, in charge of Waco Mundo, gone, literally just like that, and even worse, to a Shinigami as well. Coming in at number six, we have perhaps the best showcase of Aizen's power on this entire list, and that's when he crushes the Gote 13 during their battle in the fake Karakura town. Now, specifically, what I'm talking about here is the first half of this battle, where we get to see Aizen really duking it out with his opponents. And honestly, I love all of this. It's so great seeing him just wiping people out one by one. They kind of share and confide in Ichigo their ability to defend him, that they will fight to protect him as he hasn't seen Kyokusui get to, and they all rush Aizen immediately. And the fight does not go their way. Aizen, with a nice bit of narration from Gein, really showcases why he is the main villain. Komamura and Love come in, bringing their blades in, but Aizen is completely unharmed. He gives an amazing little speech about the definition of power and how their definitions must be totally different before taking out Komamura and his Bankai in a single hit, then ripping through Komamura again like he's nothing. Wrapping Love up in Rose's Zanpak Toe, cutting him down, taking out Rose as well. Lisa tries to attack him from behind, but Aizen severs her Zanpak Toe in half and takes her out too. And Ichigo watches in horror as all of these captain level Shinigami rain down from the sky and Aizen just simply gives him a little smirk in return. It is a great, it's a really great showcase for Aizen's true strength and a harbinger for worse things to come a little bit further down this list. Kicking off the top five now, what I believe to be the five best Aizen moments in the series, and this number five is actually surprisingly dark. And this really came to me as I was working on my most recent video, the Fifth Division Analysis, just how evil Aizen actually is in the Turn Back the Pendulum arc. This is someone who cares nothing for his comrades, his former comrades, including his captain, people who he has lived with for years, he is willing to just toss them aside like they are nothing. And so my fifth best Aizen moment in Bleach is his whole reveal in the Turn Back the Pendulum arc that he is not only a villain, but he has been behind the holofication experiments as well. It's a really wonderful sequence where he emerges from the darkness with Gein, revealing to Shinji that he has been behind everything, Tosin works for him as well, and that he is experimenting on his fellow Shinigami with these holofication experiments. It's really cold seeing him basically telling Shinji, you know, I chose you all this time. You thought that you had your eye on me. You thought you suspected me. But by keeping me, by pushing me away because of that fear, you allowed me basically to just totally manipulate you. The wonderful reveal that Aizen has basically not been present for this entire arc and was actually a false, you know, someone following Shinji around who was under the guise of Kyokusui Getsu. It's a great moment because Aizen comes across, I think, as truly terrifying during this scene. Just his callous disregard for his former captain where Shinji's like, you know, what's holofication as his face is contorting under this new mask. And Aizen just casually says, you know, you don't need to know because he's obviously going to kill him. So he's like, you know, it doesn't matter to you. You're just a, you're an experiment as far as I'm concerned. And Aizen says, you know, because of you, your friends are all lying here on the ground and he lifts his blade as it gleams on the moonlight, and he says, you know, thank you, you've all been such wonderful pawns, as he plans on literally killing Shinji and all the other Vizards. It's a, it's a pretty scary moment, actually. This helplessness that Shinji and the other Vizards feel, and Aizen is the orchestrator of that. 
And it only is, it's capped off wonderfully as well by Aizen, again, a nice hint to his true power when he blocks Tessai Tsukabishi's Hardo 88 Hiryugeki Zoku Shinten Raiho with a Danku of his own. And even Tessai is like, how can a lieutenant block my attack? What is this person? Who is he? It's all done to showcase Aizen as this truly terrifying being, I think. And you even get that great moment as well. This whole sequence is full of great moments for Aizen when he terrifies Urahara, when he says, you know, you're exactly the man I thought you were. Meaning that he has had Urahara's number basically since he became a captain. That's just a great panel. Even Kisuke is like sweating, looking scared before this person. I just think the whole reveal is done pitch perfect pretty much and it paints Eisen as being a true monster. Coming in at number four we have arguably I think one of the most famous Eisen moments of all time and I will admit it is very good and actually I'm gonna say something that I would not normally say but I think this moment is actually probably better in the anime. I think it has more impact and that is when Eisen succeeds in stopping Ichigo's tensor Zangetsu with his, with just his finger. Again, this is a crazy moment that shows us just how out of his league Ichigo actually is. And this is someone who has just given his all to defeating Byakuya Kuchki. And now Aizen has been unmasked as the true bad guy. And, you know, we're amped up. We think the good guys, they should stand at least some kind of a chance here. It's the climax of the arc. This is a shonen manga. Ichigo and Renji together maybe they can do something. And there's a great sacrifice from Renji when he uses his busted up Zanpak toe to lay one final hit on eyes. And Ichigo rushes in. There's a heroic music playing in the anime as we get Ichigo's number one theme start to blare, which of course is, you know, um, tantamount to Ichigo succeeding to doing something great. He swings his Bankai into Aizen and is stopped. Just like that. The music cuts out immediately, which is why I think this moment is better in the anime than the manga, because that extra layer of the music, his theme being killed, is awesome. It's just so good. And Aizen is like, hmm, he just sort of puts his finger on the blade and then chops Ichigo in half, essentially. It's great. That is classic Aizen. And it's so, it's again, kind of terrifying because you think like Ichigo has just defeated Byakuya. Now, admittedly, he's not really, he's not healed or anything, but it's still a scary moment. How can this guy be on such a different level that Ichigo's new Bankai has just been neutered just like that? But the, the anime, I just think it's so smart the way they cancel Ichigo's. They use and cancel Ichigo's theme. It's such a way of toying with the audience. And that's a really good example of subverting expectations as well. That phrase that's been thrown around a lot these days. But this uh, is a really great and fairly old example of it working absolutely perfectly. But we enter the top three best Aizen moments in the series. And this is another one from his appearance in the Thousand Year Blood War. And this is when he tricks Yu Harbak in the very final battle. So the final battle in general is something I want to make a video on in the future. Just that final confrontation between Ichigo, Aizen, Renji, Uryu and Yu Harbak that decides the fate of the Bleach universe. But Aizen maybe more so than anyone, really comes in clutch here. So Yuha, of course, has the power of the Almighty, something, again, we've recently discussed, but it's so overpowered, it seems like no one can stand up to this guy. Even Aizen can't escape Yuha's gaze, as he basically just decimates Aizen. He seems to, like, smack his chest and send him flying with this incredibly powerful attack, and it looks like there's just no way they can win. What we're supposed to think is Ichigo arrives, but Yuha is once again too much for him. He shatters his Bankai and basically just pushes his hand through Ichigo's chest, creating a massive wound and seemingly winning the day. Except he hasn't. The fight is not over yet. In a truly shocking moment, I remember being like, I remember gasping when I saw this because it was so well done. Just as the Soul Society looks like it's being completely engulfed by Yuha Bark's power and he is holding the now defeated Ichigo aloft, you hear a voice 
saying, oh, so you seem to think I'm Kurosaki Ichigo, do you? How fascinating. And suddenly the page changes and actually Yuha is holding Aizen of all people. Aizen has lost an arm, Yuha's hand is through him, which seems to imply that Aizen was fighting him all along. Ichigo suddenly arrives, stabbing Yuha Bark through the back and unleashing a massive Getsuka Tensho. But this is such a good Aizen moment. This is easily one of the best Kyokusui Getsu fake-outs in the entire series. I love how clutch it is. It's literally the end of the world, and suddenly you hear Aizen's voice. And it's just, it's so good to see him working with the heroes like that. And the, the even though you can't see Yuha Bark's eyes, you can feel his shock. And it's very satisfying. And Aizen is just so good in this moment. Now, the second best Aizen moment in the series. This is a bit of a weird one for me because I would be hard pressed to not consider this my favourite moment in Bleach because it pretty much is my favourite scene in the entire story. And that is when Aizen ascends to Waco Mundo. The, the jig is up. Everyone knows that Aizen is a villain. Finally, after a century of hiding and plotting, he is now out in the open. He has betrayed Soul Society, injured captains, vice captains, and left just a path of destruction in his wake. But now he's surrounded. All of the Soul Society's upper echelon has arrived, and even Aizen probably can't do a lot in this situation. Soifon and Yoroichi kind of have their weapons at his throat, but Aizen grins, and suddenly these beams of light come crashing down. They envelop Eisengeen and Tozen, and they are lifted up into the sky. It's a last-ditch escape pulled off by the Menos Grande, who rip the sky open, literally above the Soul Society, infiltrating the Soul Society in a way we've never seen before and would really never see again. But the Menos lift Aizen and his conspirators up into the sky, and it's just a brilliant moment where Ukitake steps forward, and he begins having this discussion with Aizen where he's like, so you've even partnered up with the Menos, you know, how, how low have you fallen? And Aizen's like, you know, don't be so arrogant, Ukitake. And of course, we then get, actually, now I'm uh, contradicting myself here, because I said earlier that my favourite speech is his All Gods Are Born speech, but actually this is probably the best Aizen speech in the series. It's not as long, maybe it doesn't even really qualify as a speech, but... I just think this is so good where he says, you know, from the very beginning, no one has stood atop the heavens. Not you, not me, not even God. But from this point onwards, and of course you get the famous moment where he takes off his glasses, somehow slicks his hair back perfectly with just his hand, and he crushes his glasses in his hand, which I'm not going to do here. Um, but then you get that amazing panel of how he now looks, the villainous Aizen, and he says, from this point on, I will stand at the top. And it's just that amazing declaration of war, essentially, against Soul Society. His intentions to rule as king are now known by all. And it's just a brilliant moment. Another, another moment that I think I actually might prefer in the anime. I love that unreleased track that plays as he ascends, as he does his little conversation with Ukitake. It's, I think it's colloquially known as Yamamoto's theme but it seems to have connotations with the Soul King, with Aizen. But it, I, I love it. I think that's just so well executed. What a brilliant way to announce your main villain, essentially, for the rest of the series moving forwards, um, as he just disappears into the Garganta and the sky is closed behind him. It's just wonderfully done. It is absolutely iconic and it will stay with me forevermore. It's pretty much the moment that sold me on the series in general. However... If you've watched another of my videos, you will know what the number one best Aizen moment of all time is. This is a moment that I consider to be, more than any, quintessentially Aizen. And that is, of course, the moment where he somehow uses Kyoka Suigetsu to swap himself and his former vice captain, Hinomori Momo, allowing her allies, her friends, her comrades to stab her rather than him. It is a moment of pure depravity, as Aizen seemingly casts away any semblance of his former humanity, allowing his pure and innocent vice-captain, who once adored him, who is struggling so hard with these mental health issues to bring herself out of Aizen's shadow, he uses her one last time in the most graphic and brutal way possible to just break the spirits of the Shinigami he is fighting. 
I said earlier I love the first half of his battle against the Gote 13, but this is the second half where things get really bad, and this is the best Aizen moment in the series. Now, I like I said, I've done a video on just this moment before, but to talk about it again briefly, Aizen is seemingly beaten. He's had his arm frozen by Hitsugaya, he's been impaled through the back by Kyoraku, and then Hitsugaya runs him through, and it looks like they've won. With Shinji's help, they've seemingly confused Aizen, and Kubo goes, in my opinion, maybe a little too far in making it seem like they've won, because Aizen has an inner monologue about everything being backwards, which I don't really know how that makes sense if it's not even really him there. But the little details don't really matter when the spectacle is so good, and Aizen appears to have been stabbed, but suddenly... Ichigo breaks the illusion by screaming, you know, what are you guys doing? And in, in their horror, their eyes widen, they realise that they have not stabbed Aizen, they have stabbed Hinomori instead. And Aizen appears as Hinomori, cutting down Kira and Iba, and you get this wonderful moment again between him and his former captain, where Shinji is like, you know, you fiend... When? When did you start using Kyoka Suigetsu? Because at the start of the battle, uh, you know, Hitsugaya believed that Aizen wasn't using it, foolishly. Because of course Aizen is going to be scheming. And you get my favourite moment of Aizen ever. I have literally the panel right here behind me, where you get Aizen's very typical response to any kind of question where he's like, when? What an interesting question. Allow me to ask you a question instead. Because nothing Aizen says can ever be simple. But that's the wonder of this character. But in the manga, dark shadows just pass over his face. He looks probably the most evil he ever does. And he says, well, how about this? When were you under the impression that I wasn't using Koka Suigetsu? And Shinji comes to the realisation, the horrible realisation they've been tricked all along. Aizen has been feeding them an illusion this entire time. And it's great because it, it is it is quintessential Aizen as far as I'm concerned. And as I mentioned in that video about this scene, when were you under the impression became a meme, one of the earliest memes on the internet because it was so good. It was such a troll, but it was great. It was a great troll and it is everything I think of when I think of Aizen. So really nothing else could have taken this spot other than that moment. It's a moment of pure evil. It is depraved. It is monstrous, but he gets what he wants out of it. Hitsugaya loses his mind, throws everyone off their guard, and Aizen takes Hitsugaya, Kyoraku, Soifon, and Shinji out in a single hit. And again, a great double-page spread of just this shadowed Aizen stepping forwards as they all fall behind him. And I remember the Shonen Jump uh, little comment that they used to add to like the end of a chapter, and it was, will he ever fall, as Aizen just seemingly decimated all of his opponents. And it was at that moment where it was like, what are they, what, how are they going to beat this guy? Because he seems to be unstoppable. And that's a great way to paint your main villain. But that's it for my best top 10 Aizen moments in all of Bleach. Did you enjoy it? Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my list. I think there are definitely some moments that I have left off here which could have been on here. For example, Aizen destroying the um, Kotatsu, the cleaner in the Dangai. That could have probably been on here as well. Um, like I said, there are loads of moments on here. Any of Aizen's Hogyoku transformations, for example probably could have made the list too, which is why I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. Do please let me know what your favourite eyes and moments are in Bleach. All right, guys, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. And until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.